Hi everyone, my name is Zhu Peng An. Nice to see you. Today I would like to talk about large language model output validation. For a lot of time when we run large language models, we cannot control the format of the output. For example, uh, one time the LMM may uh, output a keyword exclusion. The next time it may uh, output a slightly different formatting uh, or, or wording such as uh, no, not included or uh, excluded, et cetera. Uh, it's hard to you know, uh, ad hocly convert the output from LMM to follow a specific uh, format. Um, and the uh, the recent development in AI uh, have started to tackle this inconsistency uh, in LLM output by validating uh, and correcting them. Uh, a really interesting application is uh, from the guardrails AI, uh, which adopted the following diagram. Um, so the guardrail AI uh, make a LM call and uh, based on the LMM output, uh, the guardrail AI uh, is able to validate the output based on a predefined schema. Uh, and uh, if the output uh, formatting complied with the schema, then uh, the LM model is done. Otherwise, uh, if it's not validated, then the guardrail AI ask uh, another call to the LMM uh, to make, uh, to regenerate the output and then start the validating process again until the LM output comply with the validation requirement. So, um, I would like to show you how you can use uh, VS Code uh, and, and Python to implement uh, this guardrail AI so that you can uh, make sure that the LM output always comply with some predefined schema. Uh, in the uh, the show note uh, and also the, uh, the VS Code, I make reference to two articles. One is the Medium article uh, that this tutorials mainly follow. And the second is the Guardrail AI document. Uh, make sure that you take a look. And now let's start working on this. So first uh, we import some modules uh, because I'm using the OpenAI API uh, to call for the GPT-4 model, so making sure that you have the OpenAI API key ready. And here I import the guardrails, uh, and all there are you no know, tons of different validation tools uh, that are made available by guardrails AI, and all of them uh, should be separately downloaded from the guardrails hub. Uh, for example, if you want to import valid range and valid choices, those two validators from the Guardrail Hub, first in the terminal, you want to run Guardrails Hub, install this, install the valid range, and also install the valid choice choices. Uh, this would make sure that you have uh, successfully imported, um, installed, and also imported the uh, valid range and valid choices to two validators. Right? There are many more for to explore. And also to define uh, the schema, uh, basically the template for the LMM output. Uh, here we use the, uh, the Pydantic. So as many of you know, the Python language is not static, meaning that you do not define the type of a variable when you declare it. So this is really uh, you know, simplify the programming in comparison to say uh, the Java or C++ 
Well, on the other hand, because the Python is not statistic, it's not static, but uh, dynamic, uh, it may create problems later on, you know, when there's, uh, uh, there's uh, inconsistencies uh, in, uh, in, in the types of the same variable. To overcome that, um, the, uh, we, we can use the uh, Pydantic, uh, which uh, give you, which is a module that give you the capacity to define uh, the type uh, of a particular variable. So we are going to use the base model and the field from uh, Pydantic uh, to define the schema uh, for the LM model output to follow. And uh, you know, here we also uh, in, uh, uh, import uh, additional uh, modules uh, such as typing, a list from typing. So here, uh, following the tutorial, the medium tutorial, um, this is a doctor note. Uh, as you can see, this is no, this is just a, a, a string, you no, know, with a lot of information, um, you know, condensed into this doctor's note. Forty-nine years old, male with chronic macular rash to face and hair, worth in beard, eyebrows, and nares. An itchy, flaky, slightly scaly, uh, moderate response to OTC steroid cream. Okay. So this is the doctor's note we try to standardize uh, by making a schema. So here we first use a pandemic to define the schema. We want the output to follow. Um, so here first I create a, a symptoms class uh, by inheriting from the base model. And here I can define you know, two variables. The first variable is called symptom. It is a string variable. Uh, and in the field, you can provide a description. Um, so this description is just for your own information. And then uh, you can create a second variable called affected area. Uh, which is also a string variable that here I you know I provide in the field both the description uh, saying what part of the body the symptom is affecting as well as using the guard rule validators. Specifically, I'm going to use the valid choices uh, which give you uh, which allow you to uh, provide a list of choices that the model uh, output need to choose from. And uh, if the model in case fail to you know, identify one of the choices, uh, you can ask LLM to regenerate, uh, regenerate it using the unfail uh, re-ask. So the unfail re-ask uh, will ask the, uh, the LLM to regenerate a response uh, if you no know, uh, the output doesn't comply with the validated choices. And by the same token, I also provide uh, uh, construct another um, uh, another class called current mass. Uh, basically, it it has two uh, strings, uh, two variables. One is medication, which is a string variable. Um, denoting the name of the medication the patient is taking. Another is response, which is also a string variable denoting how the patient is responding to the medication. And finally, I create an overall uh, class uh, called patient information, uh, which um, has the following uh, variables. The first one is uh, gender. Uh, which is the string variable denoting the patient's gender. The second is age, uh, which is the patient age. And here I'm using the other validator I download from uh, Guardrail AI, which is called valid range. It's going to pick a number from one to a hundred okay, uh, based on the LMM output. And then I also uh, create uh, two variable symptoms, which is uh, just a list of you no know, um, the, the the symptoms. So basically, this is going to be a list 
of the uh, of the object, and each object is defined by the symptoms right? uh, class. By the same token, the current mass is going to be a list of the current mass uh, uh, class objects. So uh, after I define the schema, I set the open API key so that I can have access to its model. And then I create the prompt. The prompt is pretty simple. Uh, given the following doctor's notes about the patient, please extract a dictionary that contains the patient's information. And then I just pass the doctor's notes uh, uh, directly uh, to this prompt. And also because I want the guardrail to output a JSON file. So therefore I, I, I use this uh, decorator to make sure that the output from guardrail uh, is a valid JSON file. So after that, I can initiate a guard pro object uh, from the patient info hydatic model. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we use the guard from Pydatic, and then I provide the output class, which is just the, the patient info schema we created, and then I also pass through the prompt. Okay? And then I can wrap uh, an LLM call with the guard object we just created, uh, and making sure that the, the output follow the following order. The first is always uh, the first output is always the validated output, and uh, there could be one or more. Uh, so I use this asterisk to capture the rest of the output, which could be uh, the raw uh, LM output as well as the probably the intermediate uh, outputs as well, uh, if the model make more than one call. So here I, uh, because I'm using the OpenAI API, I use the OpenAI chat completions create. This is going to basically make a call to OpenAI API. And then I can choose the model I like because this is a hard task, right? Because the doctor's node is complete complex. So instead of using uh, the default GPT uh, 3.5 turbo, I choose GPT-4 model. Uh, so if you choose the turbo, uh, you will see the, the, the results are not as uh, good as the GPT-4 model. So, and finally, I print the uh, validated output, which is going to be a JSON file. So let's run this through the terminal. Uh, so I'm going to type python main.py. And it's going to take a little while because uh, this is a, a complex task and the guardrail may make you no know, multiple calls before uh, the JSON file can be, compl uh, can be uh, completed. So let's take a look of how well uh, the guardrail is handling this. Okay, so this is the uh, output. Let me enlarge this a little bit. So as you can see that uh, it, seems to be correctly extract information. So it's a male is 49 years old. So 49 is uh, is uh, compliant with the age from zero to 100. Male is a string variable. 49 seems to be integer. Uh, and the symptoms, remember symptoms is a list of, uh, of uh, symptom uh, objects, right? So the first, the first item in the list is um, a JSON file, symptom, chronic, uh, macular rash, and affected area is had. So this is based on the validator. And the second symptom is itchy, affected area also had. The third symptom is flaky, affected areas had. And the symptom four is slightly scaly, and this affected also the head. So it seems to be right. And the current MAD is only one single item there. Medication is OTC, steroid, cream, and response does moderate. Okay. Uh, if you check the information, moderate response to OTC, steroid, cream. So it seems like this uh, guardrail implementation of validating LMM output uh, and output a JSON file uh, seems to be appropriate. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you for watching.